praise the Lord. I want to seize this opportunity to thank Pastor Bolaji for allowing me to use this pulpit. I want to also thank the wife for the opportunity to minister to the sisters in the church. And I pray for both of you that the grace and the mercy of God will always be around and within you in the name of Jesus. Let me also appreciate all the sisters in the house and uh, we thank you for coming and we know that the God you have come to meet today will surely meet you at the point of your need in the name of Jesus. Today we have a special topic and the topic is so important that every sister, both married and unmarried, have a desire that whatsoever they embark upon in the journey of life, they will see the fruits of their labor. So today, we are going to discuss the topic, I will not labor in vain. Please, I want you to repeat after me. Say to yourself, I will not labor in vain. Turn to the, your neighbor beside you and repeat the same thing to him or her. I will not labor in vain. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the day that you have created for us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for another year of Mother's Day. Father, we pray that today, being a special day, Lord, you will bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Every desire in our hearts for coming to service today, Father, we ask that, Lord, you will meet them in the name of Jesus and that none of us will go home empty in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our text is taken from Isaiah 65, verse 23. Isaiah 65, verse 23. I will read it in three versions because you will need to understand this much better. Isaiah 65, verse 23. From King James Version, it says, They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of, of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Good News Translation says, The work they do will be successful and their children will not meet with disaster. I will bless them and their descendants for all time to come. Bible Basic English Translation says, their work will not be for nothing, and they will not give birth to children for destruction, for they are a seed to whom the Lord has given his blessing, and their offspring will be with them. My prayer for each and every one of us, including myself, is that our work in life will be successful, and our children that God has given to us will not bring us disaster, will not bring destruction to us, and will not bring us to sorrow in the name of Jesus. The way to introduce this topic is that when we look at the life of a woman, she will pray to go to school. She will pray to come out of school. She will pray to get married. She will pray to get a child. And after she's, she's pregnant, she will continue to pray 
until she delivers. After delivery, she will continue to pray for the baby to be born. After the child is born, she will pray for God to protect the child through toddler's age, through school age, through higher school, through higher institution, and also when it comes out to graduate very well. You will pray that she will get a job. After getting a job, you will continue to pray that the job will be good. You will continue to pray that she will meet her husband or he will meet the wife. And you will continue to pray that the marriage will be successful. You will continue to pray that God will bless that marriage. And you will still continue to pray that they will be blessed with children and so on and so forth. So you will discover that in the life of a woman, she can never be tired of praying and seeking what to do at each point in life. That is why I bless God for this passage because God realizes that this is the circle that women have to go through in life. And that is why Isaiah 65 verse 23 says our labor, the things we aspire to do in life for ourselves and for our children will never be in vain. I repeat myself for, for you and for myself that whatsoever we have been laboring for in the life of these children will never be in vain in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what is the meaning of to labor in vain? To labor in vain means the person that work and there is no results. Fruitless effort. Another meaning of labor in vain is making one's way in life difficult. Making one's way in life difficult. Another, another meaning of it is to strive hard, to work hard, and nothing to show for it. In the name of Jesus, all this definition will not be any of our portion in the name of Jesus. We will work and we will work hard and we will see the fruit of our labor and indeed we will sit down at old age and enjoy this our labor in the name of Jesus. For the, for the discussion for today, I would like to divide this message into two. The two examples from the Bible will be women who labor in vain. The two examples, other examples will be women that labored and they got results for their labor. Number one example of a woman who labored in vain is Samson's mother. Samson's mother. And that one is seen in Judges 13, 3 to 5. Judges 13, 3 to 5. And I read, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. We see in this passage that a specific instruction was given to the mother of Samson. He obeyed his own part of instruction. Even when he, when he related the message to the husband, the husband said he wants to hear that message himself. 
and he prayed that the angel should come back. The angel came back and repeated the same, the same message in verse 24 that says, and the woman will bear a son, and his name shall be called Samson, and the child, and and this child will be a Nazarite unto the Lord. And as the Lord will have it, the woman obeyed the instruction. Samson was born, and Samson continued to grow up until the point of when he decided to get married. And he told the father one day that he wants to get married. And in verse, in Judges 14 verse 3, the Bible says, Then the father and the mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of their brethren or among all my people? that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. They tried to encourage him. Remember what God said concerning your life, that the purpose of you is to save the children of Israel from bondage. But he decided to disobey the father, decided to disobey the mother, decided to disobey even the things that God has said. And at the end of the day, what happened to Samson? It destroyed his life. It destroyed the, the purpose of God for him. And uh, the, the destiny of their parents ended up in disaster. I pray for you today including myself, that our labor over these children will not be in vain. That whatsoever God has purposed for them in life, they will achieve in the name of Jesus. The second example of parents that labored in vain is found in the first Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. It says, now the sons of Eli, the priests, were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Huh. Can you imagine that a priest unto the Lord would, deal, would have children that does not want to hear anything about God? That would not be your portion. That for you to remain in the house of God and you have children whether now, later, or in future, that will say, I don't want to serve the God of my father. I pray that that will not be your portion and it will not be my portion. Remember that the Lord has a testimony about Abraham. He said, I know Abraham, that he will teach his children in the way of the Lord. And that was what happened. I pray that God will have a testimony about you as a mother, that he will know that you will teach your children the way of the Lord. We know exactly what happens to these children. They, 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 the things that were meant to be sacrificed unto the Lord, they ate it, they committed all kinds of immorality in the temple. And in one single day, the two of, the two of them were destroyed. My prayer for you, and including myself, that we will not sorrow over any of our children in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God will direct them. They will be obedient to the call of God. They will be obedient to their father. They will be obedient to their mother in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The two other examples of mothers that reap the fruit of their labor, their labor was not in vain. The first example is Samuel. And we can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, 
if thou will indeed look at the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give in unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. That is a vow that was made by Anna. Here is he himself that made himself made a vow. But in case of Samson, God instructed that the razor would not be. Now she herself said, God, this time I will ensure that no razor come upon his head, and I will give him unto you. And as it was time for for Samuel to be winged, he presented it according to what she vowed unto the Lord. And she presented it to the Lord. She did not only present it Samuel, she was going there every year to be sure that what God has said concerning Samuel is actualized. Even though you remember that in the same place that the children of Eli grew up, Samuel also grew up there. But because she has a mother who continued to nurture, who continued to re remind Samuel, Boy, this is the reason why you are created. This is why I ask God concerning you. And you must fulfill this destiny. And indeed, he fulfilled the destiny that God has apportioned for him. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. So he fulfilled the destiny that God has already apportioned for him. And even to the extent that every time he's in the temple, God sees that what the desire of the mother concerning his son actualizes it. I pray for you that every plan concerning your son, concerning your daughter, that you have asked the Lord whether you planned it or the child came accidentally, the Lord God Almighty, through the help of the Holy Spirit, will bring that promise to pass in the name of Jesus. You will not labor in vain. Just as Samuel's mother did not labor in vain, you too will not labor in vain. You will see that the generations and generations coming after Samuel also take example of Samuel. So also shall it be. Generations upon generations coming after your own children. They will take example of your children in the name of Jesus. The second example of a mother that was able to reap the fruit of his labor, of her labor, is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. And it says, when I call to remembrance the unfringed faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that, it, that in thee also. So you see here two generations of mothers, Eunice and Leos. They ensure that Timothy was brought up in the way of the Lord. Not only brought up in the way of the Lord, was nurtured. They pump a lot of the word of God into him. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So also, as a result of hearing the word of God from his, from his grandmother, hearing it from his uh, own mother, faith started growing up in him. And at the end of the day, he became a vessel in the hand of God. That even Paul was able to attest it to that faith. I pray that in the name of Jesus, as you are in this church today, every seed that God has given to you, you will pump the word of God into them. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. And as they hear this word, faith will arouse in them. 
and that they will not depart and they will follow the God of their grandmother, the God of their mother, and indeed their generations after them, they will still continue to, to, be, to be involved in the things of God. Here I want to make a note. You see that the grandmother, if the grandmother did not teach Eunice the word of God, it is also impossible for Eunice to teach Timothy. So two, three generations, the generations of the mother, the, gener the grandmother, the generations of the mother, and Timothy's his own generation, three generations, they never departed in the things of God. That was why they are successful. That was why the labor was not in vain. I plead with you, particularly sisters with children, in the name of Jesus, don't ever compromise. Say, ah, it's the order of the day. Ah, don't think that the children know not this. They will not listen. Ah, hey, <laughs> I pray that they will not weep in their old age. The Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go. When he grows up, he will not depart of it. It is, a, it is a good saying that if you don't train a child up when he was young, no matter the age, you start from the beginning. We normally say, start speaking the word of God to the child in the womb. Because you remember that in Jeremiah chapter 1, God said, testify against Jeremiah, that I knew thee right when you were in the womb. So as a result of starting from the womb, they will start prophesying, stating the word of God to that child. And as you speak the word, and as you speak the word often and often, morning, afternoon and night, by the child that child is born, the hearing of that child is already applied to the word of God. And the desire to serve your God is already established. And as the child grew up, you will watch the growth of that child. You will watch the growth, whether the school that is attending, you must pray to know the school that the child is going. No matter the level of institution that the child is going, ensure that you consult the Lord. Not say, ah, because my sister's children has been to this school, therefore my own children will go there. Or because my colleague, because of my status, eh, I have to send my children to Harvard. Is the Lord asking you to send your children to Harvard? Seek the Lord concerning the growth, the career of these children. Ask God which one is he asking them to be in life so that the glory of God will be manifested in life of these children. I pray that you will take example of Lewis, of Eunice, to the extent that you will pump the word of God into a life of the child. You will pump the word of God into their destiny. You will speak the word of God because the Bible says faith is something that swelled up in you. It's something as a result of what you have loaded your inside. Because if you have not loaded your inside, what will come out of your mouth will not be the word of faith. But if as a mother you have loaded yourself from the inside, definitely you yourself, you will speak the word of God to them. I have seen some particular ethnic group in one particular place in Nigeria. When they speak in the morning, their words are words of causes. When they speak in the afternoon, their words are words of causes. How will those children not grow up to become a disaster to them? But when you speak in the morning, you tell the child, it shall be well with you. When he comes back from school, you say, my son, come welcome back. It is well with you. When he's about to sleep in the night, you pray and say, my son, it will be well with you. Why will not be well with that child? It will be well with that child. So don't speak any negative thing to your children. And moreover, when they are even growing up, ensure that the things they watch, the places they go to, everywhere they, 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 they are associates, they are friends. Make sure you watch your right because bad manners sometimes corrupt people who are good. So ensure that you know their friends. Ensure that things are done properly and the Lord is going to help us in the name of Jesus. 
I pray that today, as you have listened to the word, God will, in his own mercy, do exploits in the life of your children, and you will not walk in vain in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, the key points that will make us not to labor in vain are, number one, pray before conception. Pray before conception. While the baby is still in the womb, prophesy to him or her. After the birth, make sure you feed the child physically. Fill the child with the word of God. And how do you fill this child with the word of God? You are singing, you are saying the word, and you are teaching it by the way you act. That is the way to fill the child. You are singing it, you are saying it, and you are teaching it by the way you act. When you do this, definitely, that child will grow up to know exactly how to behave, how to live in life. The next one is guide his daily, his daily life by giving godly counsel at every point of his development. Make sure you give godly counsel. In the area of taking a career in life, give godly counsel. In the area of taking up a wife or a husband, give godly counsel. Ensure that that child takes a child from the family of Christians. Don't say, eh, mommy, don't worry. Don't worry. Eh, he will know the Lord. Eh, he, he's a fine person. He doesn't commit sin. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. No! You must ensure that Christ dwells in the life of that person. You must ensure that the word of God is the, is the watchword that will lead both of them together so that their own marriage will not be in disaster. The Lord Almighty will, will lead us correctly and rightly in the name of Jesus. If you notice anything that is ungodly, correct it in love. Don't say they will know, they will know it later. Ah, they will know it now. Are they not? Uh, they are mature enough. They will know it later. Don't say that. Anything you notice in their character, anything you notice in their attitude, anything you notice that is not a product of being a child of God, you should correct it. Correct it and the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. There's an adage that they used to say, a child is not, no matter how, how old a son or a daughter is, is still a child in the presence of his parents. There's an adage that says, no matter how many clothes a young man has, he does not have rats like the home, like the elders. So that means that in everything in life, a child is always a child in the presence of his parents. So ensure that from beginning of their life to the time you enter your grave, you are still teaching the children in the way of the Lord. Shall we pray? If an adventure you are in this service today, and you yourself as a sister married, that you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. Say, Father, Today, I give my life to you. I want to be a woman that will be a person that will produce a seed that will last to generation. Forgive all my errors. Lord Jesus, enter into my life. Take control of me. And also, Lord, let me be a vessel of honor in your sight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Shall we rise? We will take some prayer points and I want you to take this prayer seriously. Number one prayer is, Father, 
any evil seed planted in my generation that will not allow me to eat the fruit of my labor. Please, Lord, uproot them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Any evil seed that has been planted in your generation, even while you are still not yet born, that will not allow your own seed to, for you to reap their labor. Because I have seen in generation, but by the time the father and the mother labor, they, 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 they die without reaping. The next thing happens to the generation after them. They die young. Say any evil seed that have been planted in your generation, Father, uproot them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The second prayer is a Father, in the name of Jesus, let all my children obey me and obey you in the name of Jesus. Father, every seed that I have, God, cause them to obey me, cause them to obey you in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, no matter the number that you give unto me, help me Lord, to, to teach them to obey you and to obey me, to obey my instructions and to obey the instructions of God in the name of Jesus. Number three says, Father, in the journey of life, any agents of the devil in form of man, in form of powers and principalities that want to disrupt the destiny of my children, Father, Lord, uproot them in their life in the name of Jesus. They will not come across my seed in the name of Jesus. Every agent of the devil, every power, every principality that want to destroy the destiny of my seed, Father, uproot them in their life in the name of Jesus. The next prayer is, Father, as I labor, let my children appreciate my labor and ready to reward me. And then I will not labor in vain. I say labor in this life. Father, help my children to appreciate my labor. And I will be able to eat the fruit of my labor in the name of Jesus. The next prayer point says, Father, please don't allow me, don't allow my enemy to eat my labor. The Bible says I will not plant and somebody else will eat the fruit of my labor. It will not be my portion. As I plant, I will harvest and I will eat the fruit of the labor. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. And my generations yet coming after my seed will also eat the fruit of this my seed in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. And I want to pray for all spiritual mothers just like the same thing that happens to Paul in the, in the Philippians. These people were able to sow seed. He sowed into their life. And they were able to pay back to him in the things of the flesh. I pray for spiritual mothers. As you nurture the children in the church. As you nurture the spiritual children all over. That at your own age, they will remember you. And able to sow physically into your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for your word to us today. Father, we pray. Lord, from the depths of my heart, I pray for every mother in this church. That Lord, as they labor, their labor will never be in vain. Even I pray for the fathers too. That their labor will not be in vain. We will also be a beneficiary of our labor. We will eat the fruit. We will not die young. We will live according to what God has destined for each and every one of us. And our children will, will also enjoy their own fruit of their labor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and Amen. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this simple prayer after me? The Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. I confess my sin. 
and come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary cleanse me from all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer along with me now, I want to say congratulations to you. For more information and inquiry, please contact us via the information on the screen. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. God bless you.